every class, your professor tries to rock your world with something new and fascinating. But how do you rock theirs by showing them that you take college seriously when you go to ask for their help? Let's talk it through here on Metalhead Mentor. Hello there, and welcome to Metalhead Mentor. I am Tony, your host and assistant professor of the dark arts. In this episode, we'll be discussing that most fearsome and elusive of creatures in the college ecosystem, your professors, and the ins and outs of etiquette for dealing with them. Just like a good audience knows to throw up the horns to show their appreciation at a good concert, there are a few things you can do to show your professor that you respect them and their class, from remembering proper titles to avoiding oversharing. First of all, what do you call this new type of authority figure in your education? College educators come with all sorts of titles, like professor, lecturer, instructor, tutor, and more. They often come with ranks, like assistant or associate, or other modifiers that tell you about their role, like research professor or clinical instructor. For your purposes, though, you likely only need to know two titles, professor and doctor. If you have an instructor who has a doctorate in their field, usually indicated by a PhD or similar degree after their name, it is a pretty safe bet that you should just call them Dr. Whatever, because that accomplishment generally outranks any other in academia. If your instructor does not have a doctorate, or if you're not sure, your safe bet is usually professor. No matter what institutional rank they actually have, few instructors are likely to take offense at being called professor as it just describes the job that we do. Uh, there are some colleges that treat this as a faux pas uh, if your instructor is not actually a professor, um, or they don't use the title at all. But those are few and far between. And even if they correct you, your instructor is not likely to be offended by it. Now, for some strange reason, the trope of the college professor having students call them by their first name has grown way beyond the number of instructors who are actually comfortable with that. Unless your instructor specifically tells you to, you should not act like you're on a first name basis with your instructor in college any more than your high school teachers. Be wary of how you address your female identifying instructors. I have heard students in the same breath call their male instructor professor and their female instructor miss, even when they both hold the same rank. Most often, it's because the students are so used to addressing their mainly female teachers in primary and secondary education as miss, so they often default to that form of address with any female authority figure. For your female instructors, though, it makes it seem like you don't take them seriously like their male counterparts. You may not intend it that way, but there are many who do. If you slip up, just make a conscious effort to retrain yourself to use the correct title. But Tony, bowing to authority figures isn't metal, you might say. And that's true. But you've got to give respect where respect is due. Your instructors worked long and hard at their education and in their careers to get where they're at, so they've earned those titles they have. By showing respect through using their titles, your professors are more likely to show you respect as a student and help you with what you need. Elusive and hard to pin down as a professor can be, there are a few ways of tracking them down more easily to ask questions or otherwise get their input. The best place to catch your instructors is during their office hours or also sometimes called student support hours. Office hours are times instructors are open and available in their office to answer questions from students. The number of office hours they hold per week can vary from 1 to 10 hours, uh, which can make for a very scattered schedule, but make the effort to go during that time if you can. Before you go to your instructor's office hours, make sure you have some specific questions written down. 
office hours aren't just open tutoring time for you to go over the entirety of a class again. So know what you need help with first. If you're looking for specific feedback on an assignment, make sure you bring a copy of your work with you. I can't tell you how many students have come to my office hours to talk about their paper without bringing a copy of the paper with them. Hey, professor, what do you think about my third body paragraph? Let's take a look. Where do you have your draft? I don't have it with me. Then I guess you better go and find it because I can't help you with a paper I can't see. Now, remember, if your question is something generic, like when an assignment is due or what their late assignment policy is, it's better if you check the syllabus and other class resources first before going to your instructor's office hours. When you have a question in class, think for a moment about whether the question is an individual question or a question that others might benefit from also. Don't monopolize class time with individual questions that only apply to you. Use the time before or after class to ask individual questions because class time is a jam session that belongs to everyone, not just you. If you need to discuss something during class that requires that your instructor take action, like updating a due date in the learning management system or updating your attendance for a previous class, make sure to follow up with an email explaining what you discussed. With everything going on during class, it's likely your instructor will forget about it. Following up with a polite email gives them a gentle reminder when they have a chance to do something about it. Don't get run over by your professor as they hurry out to their next class. If they're trying to clear out of the room for the next instructor, or they're hurrying off to their own next class, see if you can help them by erasing the boards, or at the very least, get out of their way and prepare to keep up and talk while walking as they head off to the next event. Written communication is probably the easiest way of getting a response from your instructor, but you have to craft your email like a metal song. Just the right opening rift, a solid body, and close it out like you mean it. I'm not talking flowery Shakespearean language here. Forsooth, dearest professor mine, when shall the exam of this course's finality be? Proper email etiquette requires a greeting, a body, and a closing. This can be as simple as, hey, Dr. So-and-so, blah, 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 thanks, student. Again, the attempt to add a bit of formality isn't about selling out and bowing to authority. It's about showing your professor that you are a serious student who realizes that your relationship with them is very formal and professional and that is reflected in your email. Make sure you use your school email address as a lot of instructors, me included, won't respond to you otherwise because of privacy concerns. In your email, make sure to include your name, the course that you're taking with the professor, and the section number. You may only have five or so instructors per semester, but each of them has somewhere between 20 and 500 students each semester to keep track of, and they can't always remember which course or section each student is in. Professors are not your buddy. They don't need the details. They don't want them. And frankly, you don't want to give them some of the details that students do. Going away for a family vacation in the middle of midterms? Just tell your instructor it's a family obligation that you have to attend to out of the area. Not that you're visiting Mickey Mouse. Can't make it to class because you ate some bad chicken in the cafeteria and now it's coming out both ends? Save the details for the Disability Services Office or whoever handles excused absences at your school. If they need you to document it, you can explain then. Your professor just needs to know that you're sick and how many classes you're likely to miss. Most professors are genial and happy to greet students and talk shop while walking around campus. 
Off campus, all bets are off. Some professors are easily spooked and will flee if encountering students outside their natural habitat. Others will engage in aggressive behaviors to mark their territory, like walking up to unsuspecting students to greet them, or wildly flailing their arms in a display of dominance. Generally, though, professors will follow your lead and give no more than a casual greeting and the up-nod of acknowledgement, unless you choose to engage them further. Keep in mind that while it's fine to acknowledge your professor off campus, they are not working at that time and they don't want to deal with questions about class or assignments or jobs. In my senior seminar, for example, one student tried to follow our professor into the locker room at the gym, still asking questions on their senior thesis. Don't be that student. Know where the line is where your professor stops being your professor and starts being just another human being living their life. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Metalhead Mentor. If you haven't already, smash those like, subscribe, and share buttons below to spread the word and earn some extra credit. And don't forget to do your take-home torture to learn your professor's title, figure out their office hours, and craft your emails like a fine metal ballad. Next episode, we'll be discussing how to seek and destroy those assignment objectives in a prompt.